everyone. So in my last video, or one of my most recent videos, I installed this interval right here there. And my eraser just fell. Yeah, this interval right there. And then someone came along and suggested that I take a look at the general form of this interval. Namely, the interval from 0 to 1 of natural log of this quantity right here, where n is greater than or equal to 1, and that is exactly what we are going to do today, and it yields out a very nice result involving special functions. So yeah, let's get started. Well, first of all, we will proceed. Well, our first step is very similar to what we did when we evaluated the case for n equals 1, and that is to combine the two square roots in there in one square root. I'll skip some steps because, well, I, I did that when I evaluated the case of n equals 1, which I believe was, was my last video, but I'm not sure, as I, as I said in the beginning. And, well, if we evaluate this, we get that it's just the square root of 2 times the square root of 1 minus x to the 2n. I'll leave you to check to check out the last video if you have, if you're confused on what I just did. Really, it's just like squaring and then expanding and then so retaking the square root. And then, yeah, I, I just draw my razor. And then we can use logarithm properties to break this into two logarithms, factor out the exponent to get one half natural log of two times the integral from zero to one of one, which is just one, so I, I won't evaluate it there, plus one half integral from zero to one of the natural log of one, wait, wait, sorry, is this Screw of one. Wait, sorry, I forgot. I should have not done it so fast. Yeah. It's the square root of one plus the square root of one minus x to the two n. Sorry. I like, I got a little bit confused. He's like, oh, why is this not simple? Okay, so, so one plus the square root of one minus x to the two n dx. And now we'll introduce our trigonometric substitution. Namely, we will let x be sine to the 1 over n of theta. I won't use roots there to make it like to make it eas easier to understand, even if it's not. So we get our dx equal to 1 over n times the sine of 1 over n minus 1 of, the of theta using the power rule times cosine theta by the chain rule. And then if we solve for theta, we get that theta, not theta, it's theta is equal to arc sine of x to the n, taking the n power on both sides, and then the inverse sine. And now what do we get when we plug everything in? Well, we get 1 half natural log of 2 plus 1 half integral from, okay, plug, plug 0 into here, we get 0, plug 1 into here, we get pi over 2. Thankfully, our bounds don't depend on n. And then here we get 1 plus, and then the n as well. So we have the square root of 1 minus sine squared, which is just cosine theta. And then times 1 over n sine to the 1 over n minus 1 of theta, cosine theta, v theta. I hope, <laughs> I, I, I'm lucky I had the space to write everything out. When I calculated a few, like everything on my, on my sheet, it was like, it was tough to fit everything in. Never mind. And then, again, we'll do something similar to what we did in the last video. I'll skip a couple of steps. And this time, I'm sure of, um, I'm confident in what I'm doing, unlike what I did right there. And this is equal to natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus natural log of sine theta. You can use it, you can obtain this by subtracting natural log of sine theta and then adding it back and combine some, some logarithms using logarithm properties, I'll leave it to you to, to check your last video if you have any doubts. And then we get 1 half natural log of 2 plus 1 half integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of, well, natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta times 1 over n sine oh, to d 1 over n minus 1 of theta, cosine theta, d theta, like this, plus 1 half integral from 0 to pi over 2. 
Actually, I factor up the one grain, this integral, since we don't need it. And we have a natural log of sine theta times sine to the one over n minus one of theta times cosine of theta d theta. And now all that is left is to evaluate each of these two integrals separately. So we'll call this one. Okay, that's two do. So I will call this first integral i1. And this second integral i2. And then all that is left is to evaluate i1 and i2 separately and then put them back into our formula to get the answer for our original generalized integral. But I'll clean up this word because there is no way I can fit all of this in to this very small space. Okay, so now that I cleaned up this word, we can proceed with the evaluation of these two integrals. So let's start with i1. And to, to evaluate this integral, we will use integration by parts. So we'll differentiate the natural log of, well, things. I'm too, I'm too lazy to write everything out. And we'll integrate 1 over n sine to the 1 over n minus 1 of theta, cosine theta, no, no not d theta. So if we differentiate this natural log, actually, we get negative cosecant theta. You can check out my last video if you have any doubts uh, if you don't know how I obtained this result. And if we integrate this, well, we have differentiated, we have differentiated sine to the 1 over n of theta to get this, which means if we integrate this, we will get back our sine to the 1 over n of theta. So we get sine to the 1 over n of theta times the natural log of dot dot dot, I'm not just kidding, is natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta evaluated at 0 and pi over 2 minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 well actually plus because minus minus integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the 1 over n minus 1 of theta d theta that's because sine, cosecant theta is just 1 over sine then you can combine exponents to get this right there and now for this part if we plug in pi over 2, we get 1 here, and then cosecant pi over 2 is 1, cotangent pi over 2 is 0, so we get 1 in, for the argument of our logarithm, natural log of 1 is 0, so we get 0 times 1, which is obviously 0. But then what happens at 0? Sine of 0 is 0, so this part goes to 0, and then cosecant of 0 is infinity, cotangent of 0 is infinity, Natural log of infinity is infinity, so we have a zero times infinity situation, which means it's better to use limits. So, so well, that's what we'll do. So we have the limit as theta approaches zero plus. It's technically approaching from the positive branch since we have an integral of. And then, since we have a zero times infinity situation, I will rewrite it. I will rewrite our limit the following way. So we get natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta all over sine to the 1 over n of theta. Oh, oh cosecant to the 1 over n of theta, sorry. Because 1 over cosecant is just 1 over 1 over sine, which is just sine. And now, since we have an infinity over infinity situation, we can use Lupita's rule. So the limit, which looks very weird, uh, as theta approaches 0 of, okay, so in the top we get negative cosecant theta, we found out there already, and then in the bottom, if we differentiate, we get 1 over n cosecant to the 1 over n minus 1 of theta, using the power rule, times the derivative of cosecant, which is negative cosecant theta, cotangent of theta. Co negative cosecant cancels on both sides, d1 over 1 over n is just n, so we have n times the limit theta approaches 0 plus of, yes, this. So we have sine to the 1 over n minus 1 of theta times 1 over cotangent, which is tangent, which is sine theta over cosine theta. And well, basically, these two combine to to make sine of 2 d1 over n theta, which goes to 0. Cosine of theta goes to 1, so we have 0 over 1, 
which is just zero. So this point goes to zero. And now for this integral. This actually is called the Wallace integral, namely the integral from zero to power over two of sine to the n of theta. And instead of sine to the one over n, of n, we have one over n minus one in the exponent. And now, I, I thought I, I thought that, that that interval was very complicated, so I searched on Wikipedia on how to how to evaluate it, and actually it's not that hard. It, it's not really, it's not really a closed form expression, but it will have to do for our purposes. So what we will do is we'll consider the beta function, namely beta of x and y is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the x minus 1 times 1 minus t to the y minus 1 dt. And now, what happens if we let t be the sine square of theta, which means dt will be 2 sine theta cosine theta. And if we plug everything in, we get, okay, so our, our bounds will be 0 to pi over 2. And then we'll have sine to the 2x minus 2 of theta times, okay, 1 on sine squared is cosine squared, so we have cosine to the 2y minus 2 of theta times our differential, which is, I forgot the d theta right there, 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. And then we can just factor out the 2 and combine exponents to get 2 integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the 2x minus 1 of theta times cosine to the 2y minus 1 of theta d theta. And then, well, it's basically just this form of the beta function with the factor of 2 missing in the front and cosine to the power of 0. So basically, we can rewrite this as 1 half times 2 times our integral and then the 1 over n minus 1 can be rewritten as 2 times 1 over 2n. And then we have cosine to the 2 times 1 half minus 1 of theta d theta because 2 times 1 half is 1, minus 1 is 0, cosine to the 0 is 1. So we get our original integral back. And we, we just get 1 half times the beta function evaluated at these two values, namely 1 over 2n and one half. So that's it for our I1, but what about our I2? Well, that is what we'll evaluate after cleaning the board because, well, this space is way too small to fit a whole integral in. I, I don't think I can even write the whole integral in this small space, so forget about evaluating it in this small place. Okay, never mind. I'll just clean the board. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up this board, we can evaluate our second integral. So, let me write this over here, i2 will be equal to. And now what we will do is we'll introduce substitution, namely, we'll let u be equal to sine theta, which means du will be cosine theta d theta, which is exactly what we have here. So let, let's plug in everything. So we get integral from sine 0 is 0, sine of 5 over 2 is 1, of I'm, u to the 1 over n minus 1, natural log of u and du, which is our cosine theta d theta. And then we can write our u to the n minus 1 as u to the 1 over n over u. Well, I say 1 over n minus 1, but n minus 1, but it's 1 over n minus 1. And then we can introduce yet another substitution. Namely, we'll let some t be the natural log of u, which means dt will be 1 over u du, exactly what we have here, and u will be e to the t. And now we have the integral from, okay, natural log of 0 is negative infinity, natural log of 1 is 0, and we have t e to the t over n dt. And now we'll introduce yet another substitution, namely, we'll let w be negative t over n, which means t will be negative wn, dt will be negative dw times n. So we get integral of, okay, so negative, negative infinity is infinity, negative 
zero is just zero, and then we get negative w times n times e to the negative w times negative n dw. And then we'll use one of the minus signs to switch the two bounds of integration, and we'll drag the other one to the front, as well as the two n squared, uh, as the two n's to get our n squared. So we have negative n squared integral from zero to infinity of w e to the negative w dw. But then w can be written as two to the w to the two minus one because two minus one is just one, and this is just the gamma function. This is a very weird parenthesis. This is just the gamma function evaluated at two, which is just one. So we get that this second integral is equal to negative n squared. And now that we have everything that we want, hold on, let me just rewrite this over there. There we go. Now that we have everything that we want, we can finally plug in everything that we know. So let's just call this integral. No, actually, I'll write on the integral in its full form. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of the square root of 1 plus x to the n plus the square root of 1 minus x to the n. Wait, my, this is very, this is way too slanted. It was like going outwards like this. Natural log square root of 1 plus x to the n plus the square root of 1 minus x to the n dx is equal to, okay, so we have one half natural log of two. I'll write out the i2 first. So we have minus n over two by exponent properties because n squared over n is just n. So we have negative n over two plus one half times one half is one fourth. So we have one fourth times the beta function evaluated at one over two n and one half. And ladies and gentlemen, everything in between, this is our final generalized answer. Now, I won't expand the beta function in, into the uh, into gamma functions because it won't make it any nicer. And now I leave it as an exercise to the viewer to check that if we plug in n equals one, which is the original we, had, we evaluated in the last video, we indeed get the same answer. But well, this is really, this is really easy. This is just one half, and then here you can find it into gamma function and find the gamma function evaluated at one half. So well, this is a little thing. Thank you for watching. I'm going to do a good actress. This is my this video. Bye.